my body is going to need to be. That way we can walk our feet out a little bit. We have a little bit of a net bend in our knee. Let your sit bones find the surface. Tailbone goes down, roll those shoulders back, big breaths in and out. <sighs> Giving yourself permission to let all the anxiety, all the stress, worries, concerns of your own, of family members, friends, the world, set that to the side right now. This is your space. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. So we're going to be working on some of our mental health today along with supporting the thyroid and knees. Those seem to be the three things that have been really coming up lately. People have been having panic attacks with the change in what became their new normal. Uh, knees are becoming more of an issue because we're walking more and um, getting ready for summer. And then thyroid speaking up, being creative, healing our butterfly-shaped glands. So as we sit here with our feet flat on the floor, our knees are going to be hip distance apart. If you look down, your ankles are going to line up towards that triangle-shaped bone of your ankles. So knees to ankles sort of line up, unless you've been surgically altered. It's a comfortable position. So if you need to walk your feet out more, go ahead. We're going to place our hands on our knees with our fingertips going down. We're going to roll those shoulders back, squeeze the elbows in, tailbone drops down. We're going to breathe in. Breathe out. Lengthening the spine, see if you can take your tailbone all the way down to the floor. Crown of the head reaches up to the sky, lowering the shoulders away from the ears. <sighs> Good job. Keep doing that. I'm going to turn to the side for those that need to see how my back is situated. So the tailbone goes straight down, rolling the shoulders back, elbows are squeezed in, palms are gently pressing into my kneecaps, trying to draw my knees towards me as my shins slightly press in towards my toes. <sighs> Good. We're gonna lift the right arm right up overhead. We're gonna roll the shoulder back and let it come back into its socket. And then we're going to, with the palm up on the right side, we're going to lower that arm out to the right. Roll the shoulder back again and extend through those middle fingers. Take your pinky finger side of your arm a little closer to the wall in front of you. It's more of a rotation versus moving the arm. Big breath in and out. And then we're going to bend that elbow and bring the fingertips to meet just above the ear. Maybe it's near the temple. And we're going to exhale and turn towards the left. Navel goes towards the left. We're going to leave our left arm on our leg. So as we breathe out, we're slightly twisting, but we're rolling that left shoulder back to keep the spine nice and long. Big breaths in and out. Good. Inhale, unwind. Exhale, let that arm come down. Just drop it all the way down to the floor and shake it out. Good. Place that arm back on. Roll the shoulder back. Squeeze the elbows in towards the hips. Tailbone down. Crown lifts. Big breaths. Good. Now we're going to do the left side. We're going to lift up that left arm all the way up. Roll the shoulder back and into place. With the palm facing upwards, we're going to let that left arm come out and down. Taking the pinky side of the hand a little closer in a slight rotation towards the room in front. Don't lose your lower back. Take the tailbone down by drawing the navel closer to the spine, slightly squeezing the inner thighs and pushing the shins away. Crown of the head lifts. We're going to bend the elbow and bringing our fingertips to touch on our skull, usually around the temple and above the ear area. Notice that your elbow is straight out. You might even feel a little bit of the under part of the arm accessing, starting to work. 
All right, we're gonna roll that right shoulder back as we exhale, draw the navel towards the right side. See how long you can make that right arm. Tailbone goes down, squeezing the thighs, push the shins towards your toes. Inhale back to the middle. And let that left arm drop down, shake it out. Good. We're going to make sure that we're stable on our surface. We're gonna roll the shoulders back, squeeze the elbows in, and we're gonna inhale and take the belly towards your knees. So now we're gonna bow the back just a little bit. Inhale, bowing the back. Rolling those shoulders back, still trying to pull those knees. Maybe you've turned your hands to the outsides, squeezing the elbows towards the middle. Tailbone still sort of aiming down, but it's gonna go out towards the back of your block just a little bit. Opening your heart, rolling the shoulders back, squeezing those elbows in, bring the shoulder blades to lie along your back. Good, now we're gonna get into that lower back. We're gonna arch the back, take the navel towards the spine, tuck the tail towards the knees, still pulling those hands into the knees, push the shins towards the toes. Breathing in and out of the back. Good. Let's go back and forth on that inhale, sort of like our cow. Exhale into our cat. Inhale into our cow, pull those elbows towards your hips. Exhale into cow. This next one, when we come up into our cow, pause. Let go of the knees and reach the arms out to the sides, inhaling. Wiggle those fingers like you're giving the world a hug. Exhale, bring those hands into the knees. Maybe the fingertips come even closer as we really round the back here. We're gonna inhale and lengthen the spine all the way back up. And lay that belly on those thighs. Walk your arms out in front so that your elbows can come down and your armpit sort of wraps around your knees. That might happen for you and it might not. You have space for your belly to come in between. When you're ready, letting the head come down. Maybe the chin goes towards the sternum. Press the feet into the floor and the shins towards the feet. Take the tailbone towards the knees just a little bit. You should draw the navel in towards the spine. Good job. We're gonna inhale and look up, slide the hands to the knees, standing, sitting upright, rolling the shoulders back. Now we're going to turn and look towards the left, just moving the skull on the neck. Tailbone down, crown of the head up, roll the shoulders back, open and close the mouth. Stick the tongue out. Now we're gonna move the chin up towards the sky and then down towards the floor as if you're painting the ceiling, the wall, all the way down to the floor. And come to the middle of the wall, move the head to the center. We're gonna to go to the right when you're ready. <sighs> Let's go to the right, turning gently to the right. When you're ready, painting up and down the wall. Pausing the middle, open and close the mouth. Stick the tongue out. And slowly let the head come to the middle. Still being on our blocks, we're gonna walk our hands behind us so they can sort of dangle down, fingertips towards the floor. Roll the shoulders back and then try to touch the floor with your fingertips. They may not, mine are not touching the floor and that's okay. 
we're gonna take this outer part of the arm, the tricep area, and we're gonna roll them around towards the back, towards the spine, and drop those fingertips down again. Tailbone follows down, draw the navel in and up. Big breath. Now, if you wanna clasp hands, you can, you don't have to, and draw those knuckles down towards the floor. Release the hands, let those palms come towards the back of the room again. Now we're gonna take the left wrist in the right hand, sort of circling around the wrist. Roll those shoulders back, squeeze those elbows towards your spine, and then we're gonna guide this left hand down and over to the right just a little bit. And let the right ear come to the right shoulder. We're gonna mix this up. Usually we're standing when we do this. We're gonna exhale and hinge down, but only hinge to what feels right to you. This might start to stretch a little bit more. So you might need to pause where you need. So I'm gonna pause right here. Still squeezing my inner thighs, pressing my feet in, shins towards the toes. Inhale back up. Let go of the arm. If you need to help the head come up, you have your right hand to do that. The head gently comes back up. <sighs> Let's do the other side. We're gonna roll the shoulders back. Bring those arms behind, palms face the room behind you. You can clasp hands to refine that alignment and taking the tailbone down to support your back. Then let go of the clasped hand. Hold that right wrist, draw that right wrist down and guide it over to the left. Resisting the urge to hunch that shoulder on the left, roll that shoulder back and down. Then take the left ear towards the left shoulder. Big breaths in and out. Draw the navel in and up, press those feet into the floor. When you're ready, hinge down, drawing the navel towards the thighs, heart towards the knees. Don't lose those feet. Push the shins towards the toes. Big breaths in and out. Good job. When you're ready, inhale back up. Squeeze those inner thighs, press the feet in. Let go of a hand. Head gently comes up. Ah. <sighs> Good. We're going to widen our feet. Grab onto those knees again. We're going to cat cow. Moving a little bit after working so much on the shoulders and the neck. We're going to hinge down and we're going to take the right shoulder towards the middle of our mat. So we're going to drop our right hand down in between and we're going to guide that shoulder down as our navel goes towards the left inner thigh. You have your left hand to press in for a little bit more of a twist. Roll that left shoulder back, draw the left elbow towards the hip. If you want, you can reach that right arm underneath that left leg. You don't have to if you don't want. And then inhale, unwind. Let's do that on the other side. So we're gonna let the left arm come in between the legs. We're gonna come down first, then drop that shoulder down as we draw the right thigh and navel closer together, pressing the right hand in, exhaling as we slightly twist, squeeze those inner thighs, push the feet in. Good job, inhale, unwind, come up. Good. All right, stay as you are, I'm gonna turn again. So we're going to walk our feet even wider out so if we were standing, we'd be coming into more of like a goddess or a wide angle posture. So what we're gonna be doing is having our toes facing forward unless that is uncomfortable for your knees. As I said, today we're really working on the knees. So we're gonna be doing some postures that normally we would be standing or kneeling for, but we're doing it with the assistance of props so that you can support your knees and the health of your body. So usually these feet would be out to our sides. I'm not gonna expect any of you to be doing the splits. Um, so we're not gonna be doing the splits. Instead, this is gonna be like a forward fold action. 
So we're gonna have our toes facing forward and now we're gonna hinge down just a little bit, but notice your knees might feel like they're collapsing in. So this is where you squeeze your inner thighs and then push those pinky toes into the floor. I don't know if you noticed that rotation in my legs. So my knees are no longer collapsing in. They're trying to line up with the middle of my ankles now. Press the big toes in and hinge down. You can let your hands find the floor if you want. You can come down as far as what feels right for you. Make it what feels right. Try to make your spine as long as possible. Press those feet into the floor. Maybe even lift the toes. Squeeze the inner thighs. Press the pinky ball mound into the floor. Heels. All right. Let those toes come down. Walk those hands back up. Point your toes out. And we're going to do it again with toes pointed. Squeeze the inner thighs. Let the outer thighs try to push away and hinge down. Point through your toes. So we're shifting where you're going to feel this in your inner thigh. Now, because I'm on two blocks, I'm going to be able to cut, hinge down more without as much sensation in between my legs until I get further down. You might be different. We're going to walk our hands over to our left leg. Go slow. Walking our chest and our navel over the left thigh. Now, a lot of us will want to dip that left shoulder. See if you can equalize the shoulders and then come down. Everyone's going to be different. Every day is going to be different. Good. Inhale back to the middle. Flex those feet. Bend the knees. And then point them again. Extend. Squeeze inner thighs, push those ball mounds and the heels in, and then walk towards your right side. Again, try to resist the urge of just leading that right shoulder down. Keep your collarbones nice and square. You might not get all the way over the leg and that's okay. This side for me is tighter. So I'm not completely over my leg and that's all right. I'm squaring up. Now I'm gonna come down a little bit. Keep your sit bones on the floor. And as it eases, then I'm over to, to the side a little bit more, but not too much. Still not as much as my left, and that's okay. Lift the toes, flex. Move yourself to the center. Inhale. Bring your hands up to your waist. Slowly start to sit back up. Roll your ankles. Good. Slide those feet back underneath. Keep them wide. Toes can face forward if you want, and then try to press those feet in. Bring the belly in between. You have your hands to sort of help open those legs, just as if we were doing a squat. But we're going to keep pressing the feet in. Try to push the shins towards second and third toe. You can use your elbows. You can come in an Andala Mudra. Some people prefer to be more like a goddess. Do what feels right for you today. So instead of balancing on our feet, we're gonna still get that benefit of doing a squat, but without the pressure on the knees, as long as you push the shin towards the toes. Big breath in and out. You can keep practicing this by every day, every time you practice, walking the feet a little closer to your block. The more you stay here and really break it down, push big toes, little toes, heels, balls of mound, feet, squeezing your thighs and then pressing out, you're gonna find which sections of your legs actually cause the knees pain. So for me, it's right out here, right where one of the small bones begins to try to connect to guide that patella up and down. And that is because I tend to collapse my feet and my tennis shoes are getting old so it's not tracking, and I know that's gonna be an issue, so I know in my yoga practice, I'm gonna really have to use my bottom inner thigh muscle, which is actually one of the quads, and then this one, no, this one's a quad, and this one's a hamstring. So I really have to build those back up to be able to wear my older tennis shoes. 
All right, when you're ready, slide your hands up to your knees, roll the shoulders back, drop the tailbone down. Let one of the knees, it doesn't matter which one, just let one drift in. Maybe rub that thigh. You might literally feel that slight pull or tug in that hip socket. All of those muscles make a nice netting formation. Good. Let that knee come up. Sit upright and the other knee comes in. You might find that one hip is not as sore as the other, and that's normal. So even though this leg, my right leg, was giving me more of the issue, it doesn't hurt as much up in the hip, even though it was harder when we were doing our lengthened leg, when we were doing the supported squat. All right, help that knee back up. Now I talked about being able to eventually be able to do the splits. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you do the splits, but I'm gonna show you what you can do one leg at a time to um, open up your hips with support. So watch me first. I'm using the blocks. Now you can also use bolsters stacked up if you want. I'm gonna leave my left foot, or my right foot on the floor. My left foot is gonna to start to move out. This is gonna seem a little bit like gait. In the classes um, earlier, we would have been balancing on our shin with our knee bent on the floor for gait. This time, our sit bone is gonna be on the block. We're gonna walk that left foot out. The knee is gonna point out with the toe first. So it's kind of like when you're preparing for warrior two. We're gonna walk that leg long, just to where it feels okay, and then we're gonna pivot like in a warrior two, our foot, okay? Now I want you to protect your knee, so we're gonna squeeze the inner thighs and then take this outer left thigh and rotate it up just like in warrior two. Tailbone's gonna drop down. Our whole torso is gonna to turn towards the middle because of this rotation in the thigh. So we're rotating the bottom of the left thigh up towards the ceiling, the top of the left thigh down towards the floor, pressing through the heel and the pinky side of the toe while still keeping the arch towards the floor. Now my leg wants to cramp, so I'm gonna bend my knee and come out, walk my foot back, and diagonal. So that was a good learning lesson because a lot of us wanna just jump out of it. If you jump out of something that's sore, sometimes you're gonna cause an issue instead of coming out slowly. I know you wanna just jump out, but sometimes we've gotta break it down to figure out what that cross action is. All right, so normally in our gait, we would have that shin down. So if you wanna walk that leg over, and maybe your leg is further up front, that's okay. So that's the first part. Roll that inner thigh, roll the back thigh. Now if you want a little bit more in your inner thigh opening, we're gonna do a little bit like what we do in side angles, triangles, warriors, um, even in our crescents. We're gonna walk that right thigh out a little bit and then point the toes forward. Now you'll notice your knee wants to collapse in. Use your hand to guide it back as if your toe was pointing forward. If your toes were pointing forward, line up second and third toe with the knee, then turn the foot, keep the knee there. Now by all means, if you need to come out of that and turn those toes to face the direction of the knee again, please do so. Draw the tailbone down, roll the shoulders back. Maybe you help that back left thigh come up, tailbone comes down, roll the shoulders back, pressing the feet firmly into the floor, shins on the right are going towards the toes. If you wanna add arms, you roll the shoulders back and extend the arms out. There are two different things you can do here. You can do like the side angle where you bend the right elbow, Bring that forearm to the thigh and reach up and over. In that same action, you can also drop that shoulder down and extending even more like a full side angle. The other thing that you can do is more like a triangle where 
you can come over in that side angle and then turn the torso up. You're gonna feel that differently in your inner thigh. Again, you can use this right hand, this right arm to hold on, but I want your shoulders nice and square. Whether you let the elbow drop behind like a triangle, or you come in more like a side angle. Different spots on that left leg are gonna be activated. To come out of that, you can slide that elbow back up, let your left hand come down. Ah, all right. We're gonna help bend our left knee. I like to take my hand behind that knee, start to turn my left toes towards that left side, bending my knee. Since I tend to hyperextend coming out of that, that's why I use my hand. I'm gonna walk that foot up in front. I'm gonna wiggle it. You can stretch it out if you want. Ah, yeah. Okay, roll that whole thigh in its socket. Good job. Let's do the other side. Your legs are, might actually feel a little tired today, even though you weren't standing. The support of either using blocks, chair, bolsters, helps you to not cheat so that you're actually finding the alignment and finding the bone and muscle structure that maybe you've been laxed on. And so it's gonna be a little bit more work. So they're good, they might be a little tired. So first we're gonna leave our left foot where it is. I'm gonna to start to walk that right leg out. Take your time. Now remember I had the muscle cramp on the other one, had to come out and then start again, so that's okay. I'm gonna point, then I'm gonna walk my foot over rolling my inner thigh down and my back thigh up towards the sky. I'm checking to see if it's gonna cramp. It's not. So I'm gonna take my tailbone down. My torso comes forward, rolling my shoulders back. Now I'm gonna to start to walk this left foot over for me because I was ready. You might not be ready to move that foot out and that's okay. Leave it where it was. Walk it to where you can line up the middle of your knee with second and third toe, squeeze those inner thighs, try to push the feet away. Then if you want a little deeper, that's when you bring that foot in towards the middle. But your knee is already in the correct direction. If it starts to torque a little bit, move the foot. I had to. Revisit the back thigh, rotating the back thigh up, inner thigh rolls down. Try not to hyperextend the knee. Lift the toes and place them back down. Squeezing inner thighs, push the feet away. Tailbone drops down. So the pelvis is now rotating back and down. Belly's lifted up, heart is lifted. Roll those shoulders back and breathe. Roll the shoulders back and extend the hands up. Squeeze those inner thighs, feel the feet on the floor. Lift the toes. Place them back down. Good. Now, if you want to do anything like the side angles or triangles, so side angle is bending the elbows and press that leg open a little bit and take the arm up overhead. That was one version. There was sliding the arm down along the inner thigh, coming a little deeper, but keeping the collarbones open or letting the arm come behind, and more of a rotation in the chest and spine. And you're gonna feel that more in the inner groin. On the right leg, when your arm is in the front, you're gonna feel it more on the left leg. Tailbone down to the floor, slightly back towards your heel on the right. And then experiment, scoop that tailbone towards the left knee and then back towards the right. Notice what that does in your pelvis. All right, let's come out of that. One more big breath. Slowly let that right arm come down. Bring your left hand to your thigh. Look at your right knee. Bring your hand underneath, re-bend the knee a little bit. Point the toes away and then slowly toe, heel that leg back. 
extend it, flex and point. Bend that knee, roll the ankle, wiggle it around, wiggle the whole thigh, the whole leg in its socket, side to side. All right, let both legs come out in front, point and flex. So what we just did is very similar to warrior twos, side angles and triangles, all in one pose along with gait. All right, flex to those feet. We're gonna hinge down, bring your navel towards your thighs. So this is like standing forward fold or seated to dasana, but we're lifted by sitting on something. So our sit bones are gonna scoop back a little bit more easily. So it's actually gonna be a little bit stronger of a pose. So don't get mad at yourself if you're not coming down as far. I'm not coming down as far. Bring the navel down. Bend the chin when you reach your spot, guiding your crown towards your toes. Maybe press your feet into the floor, the heels in, squeeze the inner thighs, and then press the palms in as if you're pushing your fingertips towards your toes and dragging those elbows down to the floor. Good job, one more big breath here. Point the toes. Bend the knees, flex the feet, bring the hands up to the knees, sitting upright. Walk those feet back underneath. All right, point and flex. We're gonna roll into a very tight ball using our, our stability, but I want you to walk your feet as close as you can and then press those heels down, but don't make it about the knees. We're gonna let the shins press down towards the heels and then forward a little bit, right? Feels better in the knees. Squeeze the inner thighs, press those feet in. Squeeze the inner thighs, press the feet in. Try to drag them away, tailbone down. Navel in and up. Roll over those thighs, hug those thighs in. Rounding the back like in child's pose. Inhale, look up, slide the hands up. Now try that with the feet slightly further away, close together, squeezing those inner thighs. Again, take the shins towards the toes and then down towards the ankles. Feel those heels, feel the balls of the feet, wiggle the toes as wide as you can. Then bring yourself down, hug either around the shins or around the thighs. Unbend just the left knee, toe, heel, walk that foot out in front of you. Point and then flex through that foot. Your belly can be resting on the right thigh or maybe you move your belly on the inside of the thigh and down. It's up to you. Reach your right hand towards the left toes. Exhale as you turn the torso towards the left side. Maybe you come down a little bit more. Drag that left hip back. Press the right foot in and the right shins towards the toes. There's some of your IT band stretch that we usually get with the strap. Good job, bend that left knee, inhale, slowly unwind. Come on up, extend both legs long, bend and unbend, slide both feet underneath again. We're gonna do that on the other side. So first we're gonna hug in that tight ball. A few breaths. And slowly slide that right leg long, toe, heel, take your time. Walk that leg out and then flex through the heel, flex the foot, lead your energy through the heel. Pause when you reach that spot, squeezing your thighs, pressing the left foot into the floor, shin towards the toes. Deciding if you wanna let your belly rest on the thigh or bring it on the inside and hinging down. 
deep breaths in and out. When you're ready, taking the left hand towards the right toes. Drawing that right hip back behind you. Big breaths in and out. Squeezing the inner thighs, pressing that left foot in. Take the left shin towards the toes. Drag the right hip back. Good job. Inhale, unwind slowly. Both legs extend out when you're ready. Point and flex, roll the ankles. Bring those feet back underneath. To whatever feels comfortable. I'm going to line my ankles up right underneath my knees, hip distance apart, tailbone down. Good. Now we're going to work on more of our thyroid. We opened up our shoulders to give space for that. We've opened up our hips and our spine, giving our knees a break and having some support developed for them. So now for our thyroid health, we're going to bring our hands behind us and we're going to clasp them behind our neck with our pinkies along the base of the cranium. And we've done this before a lot of times. The one thing I want you to do is actually let your thumbs dangle down. You're gonna feel kind of in a perfect spot for massaging your neck. You can see how my thumbs come down. I can actually wrap around if I want, but I have a lot of um, bend and flexibility in my hands. That might not be the case for you. This is so you can, Feel the muscles. I want you to feel how those muscles change as we move our skull and as we move our arms. So we're going to roll the shoulders back and down. Try to pull the elbows away from each other. Feel those muscles underneath your thumbs move. Tailbone down. Draw the navel slightly in and up. We're going to draw those elbows toward the center of your body. Again, feel those muscles underneath the thumbs. As if someone is guiding the elbows away towards the front of your body and yet squeezing in. All right, we're gonna inhale and open up. We're gonna exhale towards one side. It doesn't matter which one, but I really want you to let your arms expand away as if you're flying. Squeeze the inner thighs, press the feet in. Good job. We're going to do a slight twist here. If you know the twist isn't going to be okay for you, I want you to come out to an upright position. If the twist is okay, we're going to take this right elbow towards the left knee as we breathe out, drawing the navel towards the inner left thigh. Inhale, come upright. Turn to the middle. Good, I know your arms are gonna be a little tingly and feel a little weird. We're gonna do the other side first. Roll the shoulders back, pull those elbows apart, tailbone down. All right, we're gonna exhale over to the other side. Draw the elbows away from each other, one towards the ceiling, one towards the floor. Press the feet in, shins towards the toes. Now exhale, draw that elbow to the opposite knee, hinging down just a little bit. Good job. Inhale, sit up, unwind. Keep the arms there, draw the elbows towards the middle. Inhale, back up, good. So our pinkies are still at the base of the skull. We're going to act as if we're lifting our skull up off of our neck, just gently lifting. We're not pulling, we're not tugging, we're not forcing forward, we're lifting a little bit. Now we're gonna, let our chin go towards our sternum, turning the skull on the neck, hinging it. But the neck's not actually curving, it's lengthening up towards the ceiling. Now, if you want, you can hinge forward. You don't have to if you don't want. You can draw the elbows towards your hips and down. If you did not hinge down, your chin is going to be by your sternum, your back is nice and long. If you chose to lie down, 
Your chest is being supported by your thighs. Whether you decided to hinge down or stay upright, let your hands go, let them drop down to the sides. Pull the shoulders back, bring the hands to the knees and sit upright. Good, all right. Now we're gonna come down to the floor and we're going to do a little bit of lower back work. Uh, we're gonna do our cobras and a little bit of sphinx, okay? So for those that have had um, abdominal issues going on or a lot of stomach issues, go slowly, don't go too fast. Traditionally, cobra and sphinx were for digestion issues, but um, traditionally the diet was different. So we have a lot more um, unique blends than they did traditionally. So I'm gonna be facing my left side of the mat. You face however you need to to be able to see me. We're gonna work on our shoulders, opening up our throat and supporting your back. So I'm gonna come off my blocks, come down to the floor however feels best for you to do so. All right, so we're gonna lie down on the floor wiggle around and then we're going to point our toes there we go point your toes i want you to squeeze the inner thighs squeeze those legs as tight as you can and then i want you to concentrate on getting the big toes and the pinky toes to feel the floor the whole broad top part of the foot is on the floor squeeze the inner thighs roll that inner thigh up towards the ceiling, just like we did in that supported gait. Take the tailbone towards the heels. All right, what we're actually gonna do, a lot of us when we lay down with this, we open up our ribs and we scoot our ribs up over the floor. And then that causes a lot of lower doses, a lot of pinch in our lower back. So we're actually going to pretend that we have suspenders on and our suspenders popped our shoulders Back down to the floor, draw your navel into your spine, almost like you're gonna to try to arch your back, roll your pecs towards your hips just a little bit. Now, if you need to be not on your chest, there are ways to use props for this. Um, you can use a pillow or a block on either top and bottom of your chest if you need. Our hands are going to come to the outsides of our pectorals, wide fingertips, wide hands. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze those elbows towards your hips. Now don't lose your toes. Feel big toe and pinky toes pressing into the floor. Don't let the tops of the feet leave. Squeeze the inner thighs, roll those inner thighs towards the ceiling, tailbone to the heels, supporting the lower back. And release your glutes. Don't let them be tight, tight raisins. Let them be plump grapes. <laughs> Draw your navel into your spine, tailbone towards the heels. Press those hands into the floor. And try to drag the elbows towards the hips as we look up. Baby, baby cobra. When you're ready, we're going to lift those hands up off the floor. Still draw those inner thighs in towards each other. Press the pinky toes in, tailbone towards the heels. So we lift up, exhale down. Good job. Don't crank your head back. Let your spine be nice and long. We've worked really hard on it. Inhale up, exhale down. Roll those inner thighs. Don't let the tops of the feet leave. Inhale up, tailbone down towards the heels. Put your hands on the floor. Squeeze those inner elbows towards each other. Try to take the elbows towards the hips. If you want, press those palms away from you, yet drag the hips towards your elbows, tailbone towards your toes. Keep feeling inner toes, pinky toes, tailbone towards the heels. And then slowly come down. Good. Let the heels roll out. You can rest on your forehead. You can let your arms come out in T position if you'd want. 
Rest on one cheekbone if you'd like, with those arms hugging the floor. Whichever direction you're looking, walk that leg out to the side. So I'm looking at my left, I'm gonna walk my left leg out, bend my left knee, and slide that inner thigh up the side of my mat a little bit to where my foot can be relaxed. Supporting the inner thigh, letting my low back release. Flex that foot just a little bit. Big breaths in and out. Good job. When you're ready, slide that foot down your mat, back into the position it was in. Slide your hands underneath your pecs, roll the shoulders back, lift up just a little bit so you can pivot your head to look down at the mat. Roll the shoulders back, elbows towards the hips, press those wide palms in, squeeze the inner thigh. Roll the pinky and the big toes to the floor, tailbone towards the heel to lift up into your cobra. Inhale. Breathe in and out here a few times. Tailbone towards the heel. Extending the belly. When you're ready, exhale down. Good job. Come down and then turn to the opposite cheekbone. Let your arms come out. Let the heels roll out, the lower back is at ease. And when you're ready, slide the leg that you're facing out to the side. Flex the foot and bend the knee and slide that knee up the side of your mat. Half frog, flex the foot. Let your lower back relax. When you're ready to come out of that, slide your hand underneath your pec, slide the other one. Slide the leg next to the other. If you wanna make your way into Sphinx, immediately you can. We're gonna point our toes, roll the inner thighs towards the ceiling. We're gonna slide our hands out in front. Our elbows are starting to come in alignment with our pecs. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze those elbows towards each other. Look at your palms, press the palms in and try to drag your elbows and palms towards your hips. You want your big toe and your little toes on the floor, tailbone goes towards the heels. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze those elbows in and then try to draw your forearms towards your hips and look up. Broad shoulders, try to pull the Elbows and pinky size of your hands out to the outsides and down to the hips. Out to the outsides, down to the hips. Tailbone towards the heels. Roll the inner thighs towards the ceiling, pull the pinky toes away from each other. Good job, slowly lower down. Take a breath and then make your way into child's pose if that feels okay. If your knees do not like child's pose, you do not need to do a child's pose. You can come and roll to your back and bring knees towards your chest. To come into child's pose, walk your hands underneath, roll the shoulders back, curl your toes under, walk your legs a little closer to your hips, bend your knees, sort of make your back like a little caterpillar. Press in and then lift up and back into your child's pose. Go slow. We were doing a different type of spine lengthening. Again, if this position does not feel good to you, you can use the blocks in between legs, or you can roll to your back and bring knees to chest. 
breathing in and out through the low belly, through the low back, shoulders. A few more breaths. Inhale and look up if you have not already turned to your back. If you'd like to move your spine in any way that you need to, maybe it's cat-cow or side to side, before coming down to your back, please do so. We're gonna move down to our back when you're ready. For some, you might be able to scoot your legs. For others, you might need to sit to a side. I'm gonna walk forward with my knees, scoot my knees to the side, and then come down. Have your blocks handy if you think you're gonna need them, if you want butterfly or having them underneath your knees in your Shavasana. So you can make a bolster out of the blocks underneath your knees. You can move your legs far apart. You can do a butterfly in your Shavasana or a diamond. You can even have a block underneath the feet in your diamond and your knees open up. Some people wanna have their block for a chest opener. Usually in Shavasana, we won't also add a chest opener, but some people really need it right now. I prefer a pillow or a bolster myself, but if you have a blanket, you can drape it over the block so it doesn't hit into your shoulder blades. So that's up to you. Again, if you do use the block, I want you to line it up behind your shoulder blades. Coming down into your Shavasana. Walk those fingertips towards your heel. From your slight bridge pose, move your tailbone towards the knees and place the back down. Start to walk those feet down your mat, deciding how you need them. Wiggle the legs and then relax them. Let the hands be wide and then roll those hands up toward the palms up towards the ceiling, rolling the thumbs to the outside. Maybe you walk your fingertips down and away again. Maybe your tailbone needs to be readjusted again. Mine does after I walked my shoulders underneath. And I move my neck to make sure my head and chin are parallel to the ceiling. My back has too much lower doses, so I'm going to move my feet underneath. Now my knees are wide. I'm going to scoop my tailbone towards my knees, come back down, and then slide my legs long. Ah, there. Now I could be here a while. Take those extra moments. Let your eyes close if you want. Maybe you're just gazing at the ceiling or at nature. Or picture with soft eyes. Drishi gaze or eyes drawn. Feeling the coolness of the breath and the warmth of the exhale. The gentleness of the breath. Knowing that we have worked on the front and back body, the side bodies. We've supported our knees. We've opened up our heart and our throat chakras today, supporting the thyroid gland, giving way and space into our mind and our emotions to let go of anxiety or panic attacks, all by allowing ourselves to move and breathe, being conscious as we do so. Eyes rest heavy in their sockets as the breath comes gently in and out. Allowing your body to melt into the floor, feeling the support of the earth underneath. The gentle, comforting feeling of the sky above. Our time seems to drift away and you feel comfortable here and now at peace.
Eyes rest heavy, jaws are relaxed, throat is soft. Maybe you connect with your thyroid or your throat chakra. Maybe you see the colors, textures, shapes, words, or phrases. Maybe you're connecting with ancestors or guides. Or just feeling at peace. Feeling the coolness of the inhale, the warmth of the exhale. A few more breaths. Letting the eyes begin to move in their sockets, side to side, up and down, round and round one way, then the other. Letting them rock into their center. Feeling the awareness of your body on the floor, any props that you're using. To bring the unconditional love and light of the universe into your body. Breathe out, feel it go through the soles of your feet, and the palms of your hands, through the crown of your head, through the third eye. Breathing it in and out. Knowing that you are enough, you are supporting others enough, you are beautiful and wise. You are supported. As you wiggle fingers and toes, crinkle the nose, make funny faces, stick the tongue out, yawn. Stretch and move, being mindful of any props that you're on. And choosing which side is best for you to roll on, to rest, Maybe you walk your feet underneath your knees. And slowly roll into that supported fetal position. For a few breaths as your nervous systems and circulatory system catch up. When you're ready, slowly beginning to sit up. Maybe you draw knee in towards your heart a little bit or extend a leg long. Slowly coming up to a comfortable seated position. Whatever that might be, maybe you're back on the blocks, on a pillow or on a bolster. You feel like you can breathe easily. Your spine's nice, long and tall, rolling the shoulders back. Ah. <sighs> Feeling that breath. Bring the hands together in Andhava Mudra. Prayer hands, putting all your hopes, dreams, prayers, manifestations, good wishes and intentions into your hands and your heart. Whether they're for you, loved ones, community, the world or the universe. You join with me in the closing of the Om Three Shantis and a Namaste. We are all connected as one. Peace, peace, peace. The light within me honors the light within you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste.
Thank you for coming to class. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me either by email or if you have my phone number, you can text me or call me. You can also get a hold of Anna if you'd like. If there's anything that you'd like to learn more about what we did or you have questions about or concerns. I'm gonna go ahead and unmike. If you have any questions now, you can go ahead and ask. Otherwise, you can always contact me. If you would like to le learn more and work on your meditation practice, go ahead and look up my workshop. It's on my website, Sacred Lotus Heart, and it's also on social media. Thank you, Anna, for putting this all together.